Welcome to the Recruiter's Guide to the English Civil War. The English Civil War was fought primarily by four types of soldier. The shot, the pike, artillery and horse. In this instance, we shall be recruiting a pikeman. Take your basic bumpkin, fresh from the field or nearby village where you happen to be staying that night. Give him an 18 foot ash pole with a sharp metal pointy end and you won't get very far. But if you take that same bumpkin, provided he's large enough, with a bit of kit and training you can end up with your very own nigh invulnerable ironclad warrior that can make mincemeat after the most terrifying fighters on the battlefield, the cavalry. Most trainee pikemen will come supplied with their own footwear, breeches and shirt. These would likely be of poor quality as you've likely just dragged these men from their labour intensive jobs on the farms to fill your army. You may want to supply them with slightly more durable garments to ensure he is fighting fit for the battlefield. A pikeman with a sweating sickness won't be operating at full strength when facing down an enemy cavalry charge. We start with a pair of breeches, dyed whichever colour you'd like. However, having them dyed the same colour as the rest of the regiment would be preferable if you have the coin for it. A warning, depending on the dye, this could get very expensive. Next, we have a long-sleeved linen shirt. Nothing special, just something to put on over the top of his body. For a few more pennies, you could have a finer thread count that won't be as scratchy as the cheaper garments. A pair of hose. Off-white is the most popular colour, but who doesn't like a bit of colour to attract the eye? Leather latchets, or in this case, worker's boots. Good, strong leather shoes, mass-produced and in keeping with fashion. Boots, although less fashionable, can help protect the wearer's ankles, but are more expensive. A soldier's jacket or doublet, keeping in mind costs. The jacket should be in regimental colours, so your pikemen look neat and tidy and can be identified on the field or in the local inn. Now your pikeman is ready for action. Something seems to be missing, however. What makes this man so invulnerable? Armour! We shall start with the helmet. This is a lined combed morion. It is designed to absorb any impact to the head and deflect them away, either around the head or down and away past the shoulders. The comb is from the manufacturing process, where it was faster and cheaper to make a helmet from two virtually identical halves and fold the metal from the larger half over the smaller. The back and breastplates. These need to be thick enough to stop a pistol ball fire from about 50 yards away and shaped with a ridge on the front to help deflect projectiles away from the body instead of penetrating through the armour. Then there are the tassets. Attach to the breastplate with leather straps or riveted with metal hinges to help protect the upper thighs and the line gorget to help protect the upper chest and neck. All of this metal needs to be treated to stop it becoming rusty and falling apart so they need to be treated straight out of the forge. Plus the maintenance gives the pikeman something to do on his downtime between marching and fighting so he doesn't waste all of his wages on drink and other frivolities. Aww. Now, after all of that, we have our pikeman fully clad in metal armour, ready for the field of battle. He has everything he needs for defence, but nothing to go on the offensive with. This is where he gets given the weapon for which he is named, the pike. This is a 16 to 20 foot long wooden pole with a sharp blade on the end and metal skirts called langets protruding down the sides of the shaft. The blade is long, narrow and very sharp in order to find any chinks in the enemy armour and slide into them whilst doing maximum damage. The small size also makes the blade very difficult to see whilst face on and much harder to defend against. He should also be given a short sword such as a tuck, hanger or similar. This is a cheap mass-produced single-edged weapon that isn't as elegant or refined as a rapier or broadsword, but doesn't need the skill either. They are also much more hard-wearing and can survive being used for chopping wood and cavalrymen both in the hands of a conscript. Congratulations! Your pikeman is now fully armed and armoured. However, this means nothing if your pikeman isn't trained how to utilise the equipment properly. There may be a few gentlemen in your ranks who have had training already, as well as bringing their own kit. They deem the pike as a more traditional and noble weapon than the musket used by the common soldiery. This is because the pike requires more skill and training to wield, as it is a heavy and relatively cumbersome weapon compared to the musket. 
These gentlemen are usually here because they consider their honour and status rank them better than a musketeer, but they generally lack the funds, ability and or connections to join the horse. <laughs> Order your pike! Have your pikemen standing straight facing the front, holding the pike upright with the right hand at around shoulder height and the butt resting on the ground outside the right foot. The left hand should be resting on the hilt of the sword or in a loose fist behind the back at waist level. Advance your pike! Step forward with the left foot whilst quickly lifting the pike with the right hand and grabbing hold with the left hand about halfway down the shaft. Far enough that there is control, but not so far that movement is limited too much. Then lift with the left hand and place the right hand under the butt of the pike and rest it in the nook of the shoulder, still keeping it upright. The left hand then goes back to the sword or behind the back while stepping back with the left foot. Curling the right hand around the base will help keep the pike tight against the shoulder. In high winds, or if extra stability is required, Keep the left hand on the pike at shoulder level to help keep it in place. Shoulder your pike! From the advanced position, hold the pike back out away from the body with the right hand supporting the butt and the left hand at a comfortable, stable distance up the shaft. Exactly the same as the second from last movement before advancing the pike. A slight nudge from the right shoulder can help with ease of movement. The right hand then goes from the bottom of the pike to a comfortable distance further up past the left hand. The pike is then balanced on the right shoulder with the right hand holding onto the front to help stabilize it at an appropriate angle. The pike is then balanced on the right shoulder with the right hand holding onto the front to help stabilize it at an appropriate angle. Charge your pike! From the advance again, step forward with the left foot. Keep the right hand on the base of the pike and grab hold of the shaft with the left hand at the shoulder. Use the left hand as a pivot and the right as a guide so the pike ends up at the horizontal, to the right side of the man in front unless you are in the front rank. The right arm should be straight, the left elbow needs to be tucked into the body and the chin should be able to rest on the left hand. This will help with stability and aim as the eyes will be looking straight down the length of the pike. The left knee should be slightly bent and the right leg bracing behind for any impact. This is for when the pikeman is on the attack. LUNGE! Relatively straightforward in both action and design. Both arms should be pushed forward in order to stab the enemy. The pike should be kept as steady as possible during this action in order not to miss the target aimed for. CHARGE FOR HORSE! For the front two ranks only. Place the butt of the pike into the ground and place the instep of the right foot behind it to stop it from slipping back. Step forward with the left foot into a deep lunge. The right hand draws the sword across the body and holds it ready. The point of the pike needs to be aimed at the horse's chest so the horse either stops, therefore keeping the rider at bay, or preferably sending the rider flying over the horse's head to be finally dispatched by the sword. Port your pike! The same as the charge, but the pikeman stands upright, holding the pike at a 45 degree angle. This is predominantly used for saluting and therefore is the most important part of all the training, as without a doubt the officers are far more important than the riffraff that do all the fighting. Now get out there and fight for king and country! The king and the horse! The turrets and the horse! Charles, King of England, Prince Rupert of the Rhine! God save the king!